I recently had the opportunity to visit my creative inspiration for over two decades, Bert Monroy, and I get a chance to visit his studio. Our conversations span numerous topics. In fact, I have already released a few videos already. The first episode talks about how Bert uses his BenQ display and how he set up those display to help get him into his creative flow. The second episode talks about the more powerful computings that there are now, the new tools that are available to him that's enabling him to create even more detail in his photorealistic genre type of painting and what is really inspiring him to do all these type of paintings in general. And because we were there, the span of discussion really touched on the topic of AI because it is the hot topic of discussion nowadays. The caveat here is that these conversation about AI and Adobe Firefly and everything else has been when the product was still in the beta stage. Since our conversation, Adobe has released now generative AI and also Firefly in its full form out of beta and they are now using credits so that you can generate these and use them in commercial work. So some of the conversation and discussion may change a little bit, but I think the overall trend, how we feel about AI in these discussions are still going to be relevant. So this is going to expand about three episodes or so in our discussion about AI, and I hope you enjoy. Let's find out together what we think about AI. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Bert, you have been on the forefront of so many creative industry for a long time now from the analog days. I mean, in fact, you were just taking us a tour of all these cabinets up here. This doesn't seem like much, but all these are the version zero version before the version one of the software for like illustrator InDesign, photoshop all these are up there you don't see it right now but they're all there and you have been on the analog side of doing the creation in graphic design everything you will move into digital I mean, playing with the first mac that came out mac paint and everything now you're using all these creative cloud on a mac studio with multiple benq displays to yes. aid your workflow and we are now at another changing time in AI <laughs> with the whole generative AI, Adobe Firefly, Photoshop beta now has the total generation built in. Give us my thought, you know, give, give me your thought about it. What do you think about AI? Where do you see this going? And we're going to kind of just build on the conversation from here. Well, AI is, is very impressive. It's very impressive to see. Um, it's the push button that everybody's been asking for. Because they don't want to work. People want to, you know, just get it done and then go play, whatever. Um, so it's just made things a lot easier. Um, but there's other things that have done that before in the past, and I've seen the downsides of those and the upside. Um, the upside of AI is that um, if you can't draw, okay, but you have an imagination, okay, here's a, a new way that now you can start to create and put on paper what or on the screen, what you what you feel in your mind. That that's a cool thing. Um, so let's uh, let's let me compare it to the old days. All right, analog. That's a whole nother story. All right, to make a, a quick story of of how digital has changed the way you work. Um, reference material. I remember back in the day, if I needed to have a picture of uh, of, of monkeys doing something, okay? Well, uh, I could spend days looking through magazines, looking for pictures of monkeys, or what I would do is, back in New York, I'd get on a subway, go down to the main library in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue and, and um, 42nd Street, and um, uh, 34th Street, and um, go to their picture library, where I would say, monkey. I'd write it on a paper, and this, they would go to the huge wall of three by five cards, and then they give me a whole list of on aisle L, uh, bin 316, there'd be this folder. And then I go through there and I see all the pictures of monkeys. Then I take them up there uh, and um, they would give me a little photocopy of it and I would have my reference. Whereas now I just Google monkey and I have 10,000 pictures right there at my disposal. So that, that's changed. It's it, the world of, of art and creating art has changed dr dramatically. Um, I would go and, and uh, to paint a scene, I'd go and take various photographs of it and, and study it. Whereas now, if I can't go to the place because it's like some place in Europe and, and I'm home and I was there when I took the shot, now I could go to Google Street View 
and walk around the block and, and just look and see things closely. So that part of it has changed. Now, the actual production process was so labor intensive and involved so many outside uh, uh, people to put something together. Okay, um, I worked in advertising for most of my life and putting together an ad. Okay, so the specking of the type, you know, was a whole labor intensive. And then you had to go to the, to the type house to get it set so that you could then put it on the mechanical. The photograph always needed retouching. Right, so there'd be the retoucher who would take care of that kind of stuff. There are all these different things, all these different companies that would support the, the production of, of an ad. Then the computer came around and a little thing called desktop publishing right. totally revolutionized that whole thing. All of a sudden, you're not, the, depending on a type house, you have all the fonts right there in your little computer or get new ones downloaded if you need them, and you could just put them and resize them as you need them, change them, whatever, on the spot, okay? Retouching, Photoshop, well, now you can do the retouching yourself, okay? As, as long as you knew the tools. So that, that started changing. Desktop publishing gave the promise that anybody can now produce a, a piece of, of art, a pamphlet, an ad, whatever. And it was true, anybody could using these tools. The downside was, is that we started seeing a lot of really lousy looking stuff. There was his just ad, but who wants to look at this? It's six different typefaces. It, you know, you still had to have that traditional training of art and, 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 and composition and so on to make something look good. Right. Now you had the tools to, to do it, but you still had to have a certain amount of knowledge of, of, of what to do. So it, it wasn't long before People stopped doing it all themselves. They started going back to the ad agencies and studios to have things produced, which now were easier and cheaper because of the fact that the artist who was doing the job had all the tools in front of them. So they knew what you wanted. They were able to produce something that worked, something that somebody would want to look at, see the picture is really cool. What does it say? They can read it and all that stuff. So things got a lot easier. So. AI, what does that do? Okay, so now you can't draw, you can't uh, do that. Now you can. But what are we starting to see? We're starting to see a lot, a lot of really lousy looking things. Because some of them might have a great uh, imagination, but they're relying on their prompts, the, the prompt engineers, the new, <laughs> the new job title, uh, their prompts and what the computer is going to come up with. It's going to give you a few choices, but you know, you're going to, based on that, then you can modify it and fix it and so on. The downside is that we're going to start to see a lot of really bad looking art. It's also going to start to get to the point where it's all going to start to look the same. All right, because people are going to say, oh, I, I like this. I'm going to create something that looks like that. You know, so they're going to start copying. That's why uh, AI is opening up so many uh, uh, complaints about copyright issues. All right. So how much does the computer actually make on its own now? They are getting smarter, and I can see the time will be where the computer can actually get creative and do something that looks good, but it's still going to rely on what is being asked of it, okay? We still need that imagination. You still need that talent. So even though we're starting to see a lot of things being created in, in this stuff, in time, they're going to go back to the person who is trained, the person who has the knowledge of what makes something look good, okay? Which... Just because you write a good prompt doesn't mean it's going to look good. Doesn't mean it's going to be effective. You're still going to have to have a certain knowledge of how to manipulate color and so on. Um, there, was, there was a book I, I remember reading a long time called uh, um, Subliminal Seduction on how things would be put into ads and so on. I, I used it a few times where something you don't even notice, but in the back of your mind, it sees it. So you, you need to know how to manipulate that. Advertising is manipulation. I mean, that, that was the business I was in, convincing somebody that they had to have this product. They had, we gotta go out and buy this. I gotta eat this, whatever it is. But you, you had to go through certain steps to get to that point. You had to make something look good, okay? Um, and you can make it look good with Photoshop. But when the computer is doing all the work, that's a whole nother story. I've noticed certain things, like for instance, what it generates isn't always very sharp. So there is some work that's needed that's true, after yeah. that. So fortunately, it puts the uh, generated stuff into a layer so you can manipulate it, but 
there is still going to have to be that knowledge of what to do now. Now that I got this, this basic thing, I have to make it look like the rest and make it look good. So you're still going to, the, the machine is not going to do all the work. Okay. Um, that was a, a long time ago. I, I, when I lived in New York, I served on a few panels where we were talking about uh, uh, art, uh, digital art being an art. Okay. A lot of agents, a lot of galleries and stuff didn't want to see it. That's, that's not art. The computer's doing all the work. And I remember uh, the gallery opening that I had, uh, that I, made, I did a lecture and I said, uh, I mentioned that, that, you know, the computer's doing all the work. And I, I said, I dare you to just turn on your computer, sit there and wait to see what it does. And people laughed, ha ha ha. Whereas now, that's the case. You could turn on your computer and say, let's see what the computer does. That, that, that is the case now. But um, what it's doing isn't necessarily what you want. You're going to have to manipulate a little bit, okay? Um, there is a lot of jobs that are going to go away, just like with desktop publishing, a lot of jobs went away. Retouchers, typesetters, the messengers who took the type to the, you know, uh, those jobs went away. Uh, but eventually, they went back to the artist itself. The, the artists who do the stuff, the stuff to put it all together. They had all the tools at their disposal, but you still needed that training, that knowledge of how something looks good. Um, now we have the ability to do everything in the computer, but you still need that knowledge of, it might look good to you, but is it gonna do the job? Is it gonna attract the attention? Are people gonna understand what's going on there? So from, from a commercial art standpoint, uh, I think it's still going to go, at some point, it's going to go back to the artist. Okay, let the artist use AI to create the thing, but you're going to need his mind, uh, his or her mind, what they envision and what they know of how, you know, to manipulate a picture. You're still going to need them again. For, at the beginning, I think you're going to start to see a lot of things that people are doing. Uh, a lot of it's going to be pretty mediocre, and, uh, but it's going to be fun. Right. Like um, people used to say, I can't draw a straight line. Well, you do a dot, hold down the shift key, dot, and you got a straight line. Makes it real easy. Now you could do a straight line. So it's going to go to the point where people can create art on their own. It's, it's going to be good. Is it going to be good art? Not necessarily. Okay. They might not have a good imagination or, or really know how to prompt something to make it just the way they want. So the good side is that everybody will be able to be creative and have a tool for it. The downside is that we're going to see a lot of bad stuff. So as far as the, the commercial aspect of it, I don't think artists are going to lose their jobs. I think it's going to enhance their jobs that much more. But you're going to need their creative instinct and their knowledge of what it is that they're trying to show or tell with this. With, uh, that's still going to be needed. I feel that we're going to go through a period of like with every significant change in the industry, we tend to have the commercial job goes to the, I would say like overcompensation part. And then afterwards they go into the corrective phase of yes. things yeah. where for instance, when everything went digital, all these jobs are gone and all the companies are now bringing everything in house, but it doesn't mean it's easier. It doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. And you may not have the group of individuals that are in the corporation that has knowledge to do all these design. Yeah. And then at some point there's the correction part where it now goes back to the, the artist, the creator yeah. again. So I have a feeling that AI might push us there and then there's going to be like that, the scale back of it too, yeah. which is going to be very interesting. I hope that you find our first conversation about AI enlightening and insightful. I'll leave a link to Bert's website and his YouTube channel with many of his tutorials that he have done throughout the years in the description. I highly recommend that you check them out. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new because we are still going to continue on this conversation about AI with Bert. And remember, in art we trust.